Uh oh, three guitar legends are being shipped off to Iraq to defuse bombs in the war? This cannot end well. This is Movie Night. Welcome to Movie Night, YouTube's number one interactive weekly movie review show. I'm your host, Jonathan Paula. Kicking things off tonight, we go live to Jory Karen in Iraq, who's ready to review the 2009 war thriller, Hurt Locker. Jory, are you there? Thanks, John. I'm live here in the streets of Baghdad to give you the 411 on the movie The Hurt Locker. I, I figure I could probably do this review as effectively from inside the theater with you, but for some reason you insist I actually went to Iraq. Huh. But enough about me, let's talk about the movie. Moving away from the everyday soldier in the streets, this movie decides to follow Sergeant William James, played by Jeremy Renner, in his high-risk job as a bomb technician. He moves in as the acting sergeant of Bravo Company's bomb squad as the last sergeant fittingly gets blown up. As an audience, we learn right away that when it comes to improvised explosive devices, the difference between life and death can be as minuscule as, is the butcher calling home or trying to blow me up? With this intensity, you'd think no man can take the situation lightly, but you're wrong. Along comes Sergeant James, who treats these bombs like he was born disarming them. And with his record, 873 successful bomb defuses, I guess that might not be too far off. His light and mild attitude is viewed as reckless by his fellow two squad members, Sergeant J.T. Sanborn and Specialist Owen Eldridge. See, they just want to survive this tour, which is nearing its end, and this rebel appears to have different plans. Sergeant James hacks away protocol like it's his job, breaking communication with his squad several times, and at one point removing his bomb suit saying, There's enough bang in there to blow us all to Jesus. If I'm gonna die, I wanna die comfortable. But time and time again, with all the cards dealt against him, not only doesn't he die, he doesn't die in comfort. Oh. Hold on. 10-13? 10-28, 10-14. Cut the gray one? That worked? Huh. Oh, sorry about that. I, I just had to walk someone through, uh, you know, disarming a bomb. It's a little skill I picked up, you know, watching The Hurt Locker. Okay, back to the movie. The Hurt Locker is a high-intensity film mixed with Who Am I Kidding small talk. The director, Catherine Bigelow, does a fantastic job showing that each man deals with stress in different ways. Where specialist Owen Eldridge has a breakdown, Sergeant James appears to get a high from his adrenaline-filled missions. The movie is relentlessly flooded with one heart-stopping moment after another. And just when you think I can't take anymore, there's a sniper shooting at you. But let's see what you guys had to say in the YouTube comments. From YouTube user Sujet, an amazing movie. Kept me on the edge of my seat the whole time. It was very intense, even when they weren't out defusing bombs. 9 out of 10. From YouTube user BR the Demon, I personally loved it. One of the only good modern flicks I've seen. Very traumatic and humanist story. Decent acting. Special effects were properly used. Overall, a pretty great flick. 7 out of 10. Okay, now that we've heard from the audience, what is that beep? Oh, it's just a rate matic Let's see what I gave this movie. And I gave it an 8. And it looks like you guys did too. You know, you should ask your doctor first though if you're healthy enough for Hurt Locker activity, as this movie is prone to, to make your heart skip a couple of beats. One thing I did learn from this movie though is how to defuse a bomb. And it, it taught me that everything could be a bomb. You know, whether, whether it's a car or, you know, the road or a human being. I mean, look at that, look at that pile of masonry over there. Is, is that just an innocent little pile of bricks? Or is it an IED? It's not. I mean, I watched The Hurt Locker. I, I know this stuff. You know, and I mean, if it was an IED, then there would probably be a person around with a phone about to make a call or something, and all there's been is these people over here, and and they've just been staring at me the whole time. Oh, <laughs> I'm sure he'll be all right. He always bounces back from that sort of thing. All right, well, thanks for that review, Jory. Our second movie tonight is the 2009 music documentary from filmmaker Davis Guggenheim, titled It Might Get Loud, which saw a limited release when it came out last August. This 97-minute film documents the various histories and playing styles of three of the most distinguished and accomplished guitarists in music history, as they all come together for a single night to collaborate with one another and discuss their music influences. Jimmy Page of Led Zeppelin, The Edge of U2, and Jack White of The White Stripes are these three influential guitarists. And even if you're only a fan of one of them, this movie has something in store for all lovers of rock music. Casual fans and viewers alike will be delighted and educated on the amazing tapestries that make up these guitarists' and musical histories. For die-hard fans like myself, however, there was very little information in the first half of the movie that was really new to me. It was still a treat to hear these classic biographies from the musicians' mouths, however. 
Guggenheim does a beautiful job of relating these stories to us through the eyes of some of Brock's biggest names, all shot magnificently via a very effective fly-on-the-wall technique. While seeing these legends in their element and hearing their insight into guitar playing is a true treat, the real heart of this film is the central meaning of the three guitars, dubbed The Summit. This ongoing fourth narrative piece holds the film together, and in the final act of the movie when The Summit is given center stage, the movie really shines. No longer are we seeing these musicians tell us about their lives and history, we get to see a rare glimpse into seeing them share their skill and talent with each other. Watching The Edge explain the chord progressions to U2's I Will Follow to Page and White, for example, is a real delight. Sadly, this portion of the film is few and far between, and when the boys finally start to play a song together, it's under the film's ending credits. A magnificent and inspiring film, but sadly, for a diehard like myself, I definitely walked away wishing for much more footage of these guitarists interacting with one another. Well, that's what I thought of the movie. Now let's see what you guys had to say about It Might Get Loud in the YouTube comments. Shadowstar133 wrote, A decent movie. It was nice, but I wish they had had them play more music. Sure, some of us wonder about their pasts, but truthfully, it could have been great and I did not personally enjoy it much. It was okay. I'd give it a 4 out of 10. JHNX94 wrote, I loved this movie. It was very well done and had some very interesting stories. But if you don't play guitar or like guitars, it could get boring. 8 out of 10. Now let's fire up the right matic to see how It Might Get Loud did. Alright, a 7-8 split. Now as I explained, I really liked this movie, but because I was a diehard fan, it didn't quite give me enough. I had to hold off on giving it an 8. Your guys' reviews were a bit mixed, but it averaged out to an 8. You guys scored it a great rating. Now looking at Hollywood's latest releases, let's read some of your tweet critiques. Fishy Cornine tweeted, The Spy Next Door. Didn't actually expect a lot, but it was a decent family film. The actors were great, Jackie Chan was good, 6 out of 10. Brandon Ha tweeted, Book of Eli, twist ending but altogether a rather boring film. Wasn't impressed, and the fight scene seemed rather stale. Rented, 4 out of 10. Dave Days tweeted, Youth and Revolt, it was a pretty good movie, it had a serious story with some funny parts. 8 out of 10. Well that does it for this week's episode of Movie Night. Now let's take a look forward at the movies we'll be reviewing for next episode. The 2009 film Moon is part science fiction and part psychological drama. It was nominated for many independent film awards when it was released last summer, and it's new on DVD this month. Whiteout, starring Kate Beckinsale, is a murder mystery thriller set in the frigid landscape of Antarctica. That's new on DVD from yesterday. Well, that does it for me. Once again, my name is Jonathan Paula. Thank you so much for watching Movie Night. I hope you get a chance to buy, rent, or download the movies for next episode. And until then, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.